Hi, welcome back. Um, I'm now going to show you the Benina Ruffler. So you may recognize this little contraption here. It looks very confusing, but it's super, super easy. Um, you used to get these on the old Singer sewing machines, and they have a space here to put what's called a stub foot. Now the stub foot just hooks around this area here. Undo this. Hooks around here and you tighten it up and you can get different height of stub feet. So this is called the high shank and this stub foot will make this ruffler fit on my machine. So when you buy a ruffler, you need to tell us which model of machine you've got so we know which shank to put on your um, ruffler and then you can simply just tighten the screw on the side here and the right stub will fit onto the right machine. So this stub here is the what's called a V version. It's got a cut out at the back and that fits all the new modern machines. But if you get a ruffler and you need a stub foot with two prongs, that will fit the older machines. But there's also different heights of these, so you do need to tell us the model. On the front of the ruffler, they have um, three gauges. One is for every first tuck, because it does tucks, not gathering one for every sixth, it will um, tuck every sixth stitch, and one for every twelfth stitch. So then on the side, you also have a gauge where this is where it's doing the tucks, but also how deep the tucks are. I leave it on the full fullest depth. I don't find any reason to put it on anything other than that. And then when you look on the back, you can see um, some little teeth and you actually slide the fabric down between these two little teeth here. I'm just going to slide the fabric down here to try and show you. And when I pull it through like this, and I show you here, when I do my stitching, it's going to tuck my fabric. So if I go like this and pull it, and go down, it's moving the fabric in and out. So I'm going to do every first tuck, every sixth tuck, and every twelfth tuck to show you. So I just need to take my fabric out, and once it's in the teeth, it's a bit tricky, so I'll just pull it sideways. Don't do this at home. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put this on my machine. Now this arm is what goes up and down to form the tucks. So this arm here needs to go over your needle bar because your needle bar goes up and down. And so by putting this arm over the needle bar and this on where my normal foot would go, that's what's going to make the machine work. So I'm going to line this up with my needle bar. Put my needle bar down a bit lower so I can see it. And then I'm going to put this around my stub. So I've got that over the needle bar. Now I just need to turn this. Make sure my foot's up. There we are. And now I can get this up and under. And then I'm just going to put my foot down normally because I've already tied up, tightened up my screw. There's a place to put your thread. I put a couple of different colours on here so you'll be able to see it. And I'm going to first leave it on every first tuck. How far apart these tucks are is going to relate to the length of the stitch you've done. So if I put my stitch length longer, my tucks will be further apart as well because my stitch length's longer. The next thing I have to do on these new machines is tell it the number of the foot. This ruffler is number 86. So I go 0 to 9, 86 and the picture of the ruffler comes up and I tell the machine. So now the machine knows what foot's on. I'm going to put my stitch length, I'll just put it on three for argument's sake, and it shows me a picture of the ruffler. Now this is what I did just on the gathering foot, and I've just pulled the rest of that gathering out, and now I'm going to do the rest with the ruffler, just to show you. So I need to slide my fabric between the two little pieces here, put my foot down and I'm going to do every first ruffle, uh, yeah it's ruffle, but it's actually little tucks and that's what I've used for my linen. So I'm now going to show you the difference between tucking and gathering. 
So <laughs> that is every first ruffle and that's little tucks and that was my gathering. Can you see the difference? On the other side I'm going to do every sixth ruffle and you'll see the difference in that. So I'm just going to go on this side, put my foot down and this time it's every sixth. So every six stitches it's going to do a tuck. It's really hard when you've got the other side that's already done but I just want to show you the difference. All right, so keep going. So keep the fabric flat while you're tucking it. up lift it up and that is every sixth tuck so you can see hopefully you can see that the actual little pleats all right so every first normal gathering and every sixth tuck now if I show you on this fabric because I'm going to do it upside down so you can see it this is white what you can do is you can do every sixth tuck like that you can see it much better on this and this could be the ruffle around a quilt this is what we used to do around quilts let me show you that so we used to put little ruffles like this on the edge of a quilt and this is on the right side and you could put them on the bottom of a skirt very 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 nice or you can slide this in here and go right through the middle and put it on every first tuck and lengthen it out. And now I will get a tuck right through the middle of my fabric and this is how I did my skirt. So right through the center. Very hard to judge how much fabric. So like I said earlier, Look how amazing that is. Isn't that incredible? And it can look very effective if you've got a patterned fabric like this. All right, I reckon that's great. So that's what it looks like on a cotton. But as you know, I wanted to do this look, which was a linen. And this linen was ruffled and put on here and then washed to make this rough look. So it was washed after I had done all my ruffling. So now look at the difference. Here was the gathering that we thought, oh, that was a little bit okay. But now look what it looks like when I use my ruffler. So there are time and place for both. So I just went on one side straight through the middle. On the other two, I went on the edge. So I'm going to go straight through the middle. Then when I get up to here, I'm just going to do it on the edge. You can see the difference. So straight through the middle you get that beautiful crisp clean look and on the edge it really makes it ruffle on the edge. So you decide the look you want. Now when I decided to do this and then sew it onto my garment, pretend this is my garment, I then straight stitched it turned up my hem and I straight stitched straight through the row of stitching I'd already done. Then I washed it and dried it in the dryer on cold and that's what formed my rough edge and I ended up with all of this revolting thread everywhere but that's what made the look. So you need to decide the look you like. So if you don't like the raw edge look like I've got on here then you would overlock this edge or clean finish the edge before you start doing your ruffling. Now if you don't like it, you simply can pull it out and start again. So it's not like it's um, really set at all. You can just pull it out and you can iron that out and you can start again because it's only set when you go and stitch this onto something. Okay, I can pull this out just like that. So don't panic about it. But what you can do, which is really, really cool with a ruffler, is I can go and ruffle, doesn't matter whether you're doing the right or wrong side, depending on the look you want. 
I can ruffle this on this side. Put up. And then turn it over to the right side and ruffle this side. Go a bit slower because you want to get even. See, there's so many uses for the ruffler that it's crazy. And it's so easy and so quick. I used to do this a lot on heirloom sewing. Now what I've got is I've now made a piece of fabric which can be inserted into something. So look what I've just produced just from ruffling down one side and down the other side. I've now pr produced a fabric that can be stitched into a blouse, stitched into a cushion and by just straight stitching I'll take the ruffler off and just show you. I'll take the ruffler off. Just lift it up, foot up, up, oh, foot up, sorry. Take the ruffler off, put on a normal, normal sewing foot. Uh, a normal foot would be handy. Oh, this will do. I'll just put my Teflon foot on because it's the right one that I can see. And I've got to tell my machine what foot I've got on. Doesn't matter whether it's Teflon or standard. 52, and it's the D dual feed. Now, all I need to do is put my fabric right side to right side. Move my needle position so it's over to the left of my stitches. I'll clear it and then move it over. So I'm sewing inside my stitching line. And I'm doing a normal straight stitch. So I'm enclosing my ruffle in my seam of my blouse or in a, in a um, cushion or a skirt or whatever and I'm now stitching it in and it's never going to come undone go go <laughs> and cut so now I have encased my fabric so what the other thing I can do is roll that over and stitch in the ditch will make that wider and double fold it. But now you can see what you've made just by using your ruffler. It's quite incredible. So you can utilize a ruffler and manipulating your fabric for any reason. It can be anything you like, but it looks gorgeous if you do two rows down either side of a white blouse or something in a Christmas. I mean, this is Christmas fabric. Yeah, it's really, really nice. So don't overlook the ruffler. Um, they are amazing. This little wire is what does all the work and I have never ever in 20 odd years, 30 years of using my ruffler have I needed to replace it. So it's a very strong little wire and when you buy the ruffler you get a free one of these which I've never ever had to replace. So if you've got an old one of these rufflers without a stub foot bring it in and I can see if we can fit a Benina stub foot onto your old ruffler. If not, save up your pennies and buy a new ruffler because they are amazing. I don't use every 12th tuck because there's no point, it's too long. Um, I find every first or every six are the only ones that I use and I use it the full depth of my pleat that I can do. So, yeah. So when I'm sewing this, I did long strips of ruffles and I measured the width and then I cut it to size and I stitched it together before I tucked it into here and yeah very very simple so I just sew rows of stitching it was very simple and it just makes a plain little skirt into something a little bit more designer so nice and easy to wear with this lovely thick linen I didn't need to put a lining but I'm making one out of a lighter weight linen and I'm lining it in cotton lining so that it's not see-through. But for this one, I didn't need to do anything. And you know, everyone needs a little black skirt in their wardrobe. So simple, just with little darts, invisible zip, um, a facing, and it just sits 
waist high or hip high, however you like to wear it, and a side zip is always nice and easy. So try your hand with a ruffler, and if you don't like the ruffler, then you can just use your gathering foot that I showed you. But yeah, very, very, very simple, and have a good rest of your year, and we'll see you in 2023.